Sup guys, this is Google's Pixel tablet and I don't know how well it's gonna sell. I'll tell you why I say that. Like preliminarily, it is a good device and everything. Um, I just don't know how well it's going to sell in comparison to the big players that dominate the tablet market today, like globally. In the worldwide tablet market, Apple's got a 51% share of that market, followed by Samsung, a 30.4% roughly, followed by everybody else. So how is this going to compete while it is a good device, I don't think it's going to grab much market share even from Samsung, especially Samsung obviously because we want to compare apples to apples, so we're comparing Android to Android. There's just some product decisions that were made here that I feel will make this a tougher sell than Google is hoping for. And one of those reasons is probably something that Google thinks is a good thing about it. We're going to get into that in a bit. but. Preliminarily, I just want to cover the basics with you about the device. First off, before I tell you like details on the specs, I just want to show you something. This is your dock. The dock also functions as the uh, speaker that adds a lot of bass to the sound that comes out of the device, without which the device sounds kind of tinny when you are using the built-in speakers in the Pixel tablet itself. Uh, I just want to show you how irritating it is to dock this. So first off, like if you grab the tablet up top, so like this is what I'm talking about. Just to dock it back in place takes a few tries. Doesn't always work very smoothly. It is a super slow way to charge the tablet, but I don't think it's going to be too bothersome if you're using it mainly at home because if you're gonna stream video with this, you can probably get up to 10 hours comfortably of video streaming. So whether it charges slow or quickly, you're gonna get the job done because you're probably not gonna leave the house with this unless you wanna venture out with your own charging cable. Up here, you have your microphones, you've got the volume rocker on the side over here, which kind of looks really glossy and cheap. I would have made it a different kind of matte finish. This is your power button, which also doubles as your fingerprint sensor. Uh, you have the USB-C charging port over here, and you've got speakers. And this is your tablet. It's pretty lightweight. It weighs roughly one pound or half a kilogram, 493 grams to be exact. As for dimensions, it's 10.2 inches wide by 6.7 inches high. It's got a thickness of 0.3 millimeters, so it's pretty decently thin. Like, there, there's nothing to complain about in terms of the dimensions of the device. The aspect ratio of this device is 16 to 10, so some people feel that's a bad thing. Some people like the iPad aspect ratio more, which is 4 to 3. So, one nice thing about this is if you have slightly bigger hands, you can hold it this way, not that you'd always need to, but it's kind of nice that you can have that kind of grip over the device. The battery in the Pixel tablet is a 7020 milliamp battery, so it's not that huge. You've got a really crisp and sharp LCD display that's 10.95 inches large. The resolution is 2560 by 1600, and it's got 276 PPI, which is not bad. I mean, other than the aspects that you see on a spec sheet, you've got to look at what your eyes can see. And what your eyes can see here is really compelling. It's a very clean display. It has some anti-smudge coating on it, which is really nice. And it really is very responsive to touch. Typical brightness on the screen is 500 nits. It's got full 24-bit depth for 60 million colors. But like, when you look at the way it moves, when you look at how responsive it is, it's not exactly snappy. It's not very quick. In terms of security, the Pixel has hardware security using the Titan M2 security coprocessor. I want to show you something really cool too that you can do on here basically. So this is your normal dock. You can lift it up here and here it is again. You can split the screen for YouTube for example. Have the camera on the other side. Start playing this video. And, everything and as it goes, so far, you can been a amount of information released in the past take photos, you can start recording video network, as YouTube uh, continues playing. So I am actually recording a video as the video is playing on YouTube. And when you listen to the recording after we're done with this bit, you're going to be able to hear both my voice and the video's voice. So let's stop that for a sec. And I'm gonna play it now. Of course, when you play it, it's gonna pause the YouTube video. Anyhow, here it is. And you can hear both my voice and the video's voice in it. Now, of course, it doesn't play both at the same time. That's something else. But this is uh, a really decent use of multitasking. 
And when I say decent, I'm referring to technical capability, but the reality is how often are you going to be doing that? How often would you need to watch a video while taking photos of yourself? Not really a useful thing, but it's a display of technical capability. The tablet, you can definitely feel that it's made of metal. I mean, it's got this kind of sanded finish on the back, but you can feel that it's metal because if you know the touch and how cold it can feel. Memorywise has got eight gigs of LPDDR5 RAM. This is the 128 gigabyte storage option. The front camera is eight megapixels and you've got the rear camera back here, which is also eight megapixels. I gotta say the camera is pretty decent. Like I was kind of pleasantly surprised with it. So let's just open that and take a shot. This is what it's gonna look like if I do this, this kind of lighting, that's not bad. So let's go ahead and take a snapshot. And this is what the picture looks like. Another photo over here is still pretty mid-range, guys. I mean, remember, this is not exactly what would be called a high-end device. This is a mid-range device with mid-range performance, even though it's got a really high-end chip, which is one of the other bothersome things about it. This is the kind of video this takes, so let's take a listen and a look. This is the kind of video this takes, so let's take a listen and a look. Oh, and by the way, of course, this is the porcelain color. It comes in three colors. When you really buy it, honestly, I mean, this is what it looks like in real life and on the website it looks more beige your two other color options are hazel and rose hazel looks kind of nice rose is also appealing they're all very calm colors there's nothing too vibrant about any of them in terms of updates that google's promising they're saying that this is going to get at least three years of software updates and at least five years of security updates and that's like another thing that i'm not too fond of i mean if you look at the competition and I'm not saying that this is equivalent to the Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, but the Galaxy S8 tablet is going to get four Android updates and five years of security updates. Like in terms of software updates, this should at least be equivalent to Galaxy devices, if not better. Now, as for the way the tablet sounds, here's what it sounds like from the built-in speakers first, then what it sounds like from the speaker dock. Introducing the Google Pixel tablet. The only tablet engineered by Google. Paired with a charging speaker dock, it transforms from tablet to home control, photo frame, and so much more. With an elite screen, with room filling sound. View the content you love on its brilliant screen. Preloaded with Google TV and curated just for you. Thoughtfully designed with premium materials and loaded with helpful features. Like hub mode, where you can answer the doorbell, control lights, cameras, thermostat, and access Google Assistant. Watch this. Hey, Go I would personally say that it sounds kind of tinny from the built-in speakers. And from the speaker dock, there's definitely bass. It sounds richer, it sounds deeper, but it kind of sometimes sounds like it's a bit muffled from the speaker dock. So there you have it, guys. I mean, that's really what this device is like. It's just a normal mid-range tablet. And the experience is a mid-range experience. Uh, it's got a 60 hertz refresh rate, so there's nothing impressive in that arena. And that's, that's all there is to it. Now, this is what I don't like about what Google did with this. This is the only tablet that they're releasing currently. And they're coming to this market that they have no foothold in at all in terms of tablets, not in terms of other devices and whatnot. So when they release a device, they release something that costs $499, like let's say 500 bucks, and they force this speaker dock on you. Now, they're selling this uh, as a two-in-one device, which it is because it doubles as a smart home display, as like a home hub. And I don't think that if you offer one tablet on the market that you should sell it like this. You should sell these two things together. You should sell this, in my opinion, as a tablet on its own, and I'll tell you why. If you were to buy this charging speaker dock on its own, it costs about $130, $129 basically. So basically Google's implying that this tablet has a value of $370. Okay, if this was selling for $370, I think it would have sold way more devices. Then you could have sold this on its own for people who want it. Or even if you wanted to, you can just go buy a Nest Hub Gen 2 or something for about 100 bucks, And that would have still saved you about 30 bucks compared to if you buy these two bundled together, which is the only way it sells, like I was saying. So that's one product decision I, I don't agree with. This should have sold on its own for $370, maybe even $350. And instead of throwing in 
the charging dock and forcing this smart home display thing on the customer who doesn't necessarily want one. This should have come with a stylus. If they really wanted to sell something with this, it could have come with a stylus and definitely with a USB-C charging cable. Like at least a cable if not also a charging brick. This is a better device than the Samsung Galaxy Tab A8. And if you buy the 128GB version of the A8, it's gonna cost you about $280. Now if you buy a Samsung Galaxy Tab S8, also the 128GB version, it costs about $690. So this is priced in the middle. So in that sense, it's logical because this is a better device than the A8, but it's not as good as the S8. So it's priced right in the middle. It's logical in that sense. But what would make you sell more of it is if you sold it with the stylus, with the charging cable, and hopefully brick too, and drop the speaker dock two-in-one smart home display idea completely. It would make production easier and sell more units because it would be more appealing to the customer, especially in economic times like this. The fact that it supports USI 2.0 stylus pens is great. Just give us one in the box, Google, come on. You see, here's the thing about presenting your lone tablet as a two-in-one device that functions as a tablet and as a smart home display. When Google does this, it seems like they're presenting the smart home display feature as a selling point, when I really don't think it is. Normally, a selling point for any device would be when you're trying to sell a device that usually does very limited things, and you've managed to make a technological advancement to make it do something extra special that usually is done by a much more expensive or much more capable device. For example, when people came up with a smartwatch that can make phone calls, that is a big selling point. Like, it's not a great experience, but do you see the point? A watch making a phone call, that's a big thing. The other way around isn't really viewed as a strong selling point in my opinion. It's a feature. So if you're gonna get it, you might as well use it. It's not a bad feature. It's an addition. Like, it's, it's a good feature, but I don't think it's a strong selling point because you're taking a more capable device, which is a tablet, doing a much simpler task, which is acting as a smart home display or a home hub, which is a much less powerful task, usually done by a much less powerful device. How's that a thing that's gonna make me lean towards buying this tablet over buying the competition's tablet. I don't think it is. So yeah, there you have it, guys. This is Google's Pixel tablet, and this has been the video. I hope you liked it. Uh, please comment down below and let me know what you think of this, and uh, subscribe, like the video if you liked it, and I'll see you next time.